to the green belt area which is Marble Arch Cave. And following the skyline round you have Kulka Mountain which is one of the large higher mountains in County Fermanagh. To my left you have the villages of Derragonley. Are you heading for Derragonley? No, no, no you're not. Hastily. Of Derragonley and directly behind you have Bellish, uh, Ballyshan and Donegal. We're just 28 miles from the, the uh, Atlantic here. Hi, I'm just normally in high school. Yeah. So there are people who are well educated. Yeah. Is 110 years old. 110 years old. The house wasn't built 110 years ago. The house is much more than 280 years, more than 250 years old. The 110 years ago, my grandfather, who was newly married, bought the house on 12 acres of land, which is 3.47 hectares in today's measurements. And uh, the following year, his first child was born into this house exactly as it is today. And that was on the 18th of September, 1888. <laughs> 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 this is what you did. Um, the house has three rooms. An upper room, which is a name taken from the Bible, means the better room. The under room, which is the dumping room. And this is the really only important room of the house. Because this is the room that hosts the fire. As you can see, the fire's on the floor, and the floor continues outside. That's to allow for drainage. The fire is essential because the original timbers are on the roof. And if, they were allowed, if the fire went out over a long period of time, the creosote-like coating of soot that is keeping the timbers secure would start to melt, and the timbers would wilt, and the house would fall. It'd be as simple as that. So it's necessary to keep a good fire. The original plaster is on the back stone here, and the brace stone here carried on over the upper room door. And it is a mixture of cow clap, which you are walking in today coming <laughs> down, cow clap, pig's blood, and roach lime. And the whole house is plastered in that. But there's a, a modern mix of plaster covering the, these three walls, but the back stone has not. That is the original plaster. The original plaster on the back stone carried on over the upper room door and it's papered over it and whitewashed over that to preserve it. What is roach lime? Roach lime is hot lime. Yeah. Yeah. Roach lime is one small stone of hot lime, a lime stone that when you put water on it blows up or, uh, you know, yeah. uh, integrates, yeah. uh, disintegrates and um, comes in as powder, hot as powder. Okay. And that with the, the, the acid in the, the uh, cow clap and the, the pig's blood all seed together make it a, a, a very, very strong plaster. Much, much stronger than actually what's on the rest of the house. Thank you. Um, the, it was customary when a house like this was built at that particular time that well, there was nothing wasted and all the timbers, all was indigenous, all grown. The bog oak is the, the timbers, which is the first form of Irish oak. And it was customary to have either a settled bed or a hanging Left, made with the leftover timbers. We went for the hanging table, which is a one-legged table, hinged to the wall, hangs up to the roof, runs along a steel bar here, and doubled as a shutter. So the table is the exact same age as the house. There are only three windows, east facing, and one door. We did have a back door many years ago, but in order to strengthen the roof, it was, uh, it was sealed up. The plates on the dresser, the brown and white on the dresser are first peeled, the stage Irish stuff that the leak is pumping out today. <laughs> and that really is really what yeah. made the leak right. famous. Wonderful. It is not the green and white shower. Hang on. Don't mention this at all. No, no thank no. you. I don't think they're making any guess. Sorry, they don't think they are. So I might laugh when you're really taking photographs. And uh, the rate of evaluation of the house is 10 pounds, which is the lowest in Northern Ireland, or one of the lowest <laughs> in Northern Ireland. I live in Enniskill and mine's 238 pounds. <laughs> so, um, there's running water? No, there's no water in the cottage at all. And where do you live? 
Where do you live? What's the name of the town? No, no. Where, where do you live? What house do you live in? This, this, is, this is home, Casey Quiet. This is this is home. <laughs> you live here? I live here. I this is not an easy live. I did not come in this morning to open up for you. I live here. Irrespective of you coming or not, I would still be here. As pretty as I am at this particular point in time. I would still be with no home. running water. No running water. I get my water from a well down the sea. I carry my enamel buckets down to the well. Two buckets is much handier than one. And um, I boil the water in the black pot or in the kettle here, as you see. And uh, we do not have a crane crook. Does anyone any idea what a crane crook is? That's it. Do you know what a crane crook is? No. Would you like to explain to the guests what a crane crook is? No, well, it crane basically crane. Was, was hinged here. And Oh, that's 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 very, very good. It's one armed um, apparatus that was secured into the floor, and you had a bar going across here that swung to the left hand side of the house, which was perceived to be where the lady sat that, and doing something, turning the heels and socks or nursing babies or whatever. The men were otherwise engaged spitting and playing cards on the right hand side of the house, so they couldn't be expected to lift off the pots or whatever. So, we, we, never, we never got as far. This, Green crooks in, in the late 1800s were only for yuppie houses. We didn't uh, aspire to having a crane crook either then or now. We have the base crook, which is one uh, bar across and a single chain down. There's no electricity in the house either. Um, the light is either from the fire, which is good enough for me at night, or from the double burning oil lamps on the wall with the mirrors behind to give an added reflection of light, or the single burning oil lamp on the window, or the candles for the upper and under room. How many years have you lived here? I have lived here 55 years and uh, three quarters. Was born. I was born in here. In this house? Or, and my father was born into it in 1888. The house exactly as it is today. Do you I have a battery powered radio? Yes, I have a wireless. I cook over the hearth fire. I do my bacon in my pots and pans. There's I made this ginger cake this morning on this particular pot here. So how do I you? Needed, how like how did they let you know that uh, we were coming? Oh, it's part of a tourist. Katrina, Katrina contacted me. I'm, I'm but how did she contact you? Well, I work in an enterprise centre which does have electricity and has a telephone mm -hmm. and has things that modern things running uh -huh. water and all uh -huh. that. People tell me morning water is not modern to me. It's very modern. <laughs> uh, someone asked me how I baked. I put the lid here over the coals. That fire is not ready for baking yet. It has to be all down into little cinders like that there. Completely red mass. And I put the lid over the fire until it's very, very hot. I then hang on my pot oven. This is a pot oven, folks. I hang on my pot oven up here on one of the crooks. Not the longer crooks, one of the smaller crooks onto this pot. Then I bake in the normal way in my enamel bones, my flour with my buttermilk or my yogurt and honey, and heal the whole stuff into the pot and hang it on there. Put the small coals, these ones I mentioned, over the lid of the oven so that the heat is evenly distributed. Mm. And I can bake the exact same as you can in your conventional oven. No difference whatsoever. My ironing is a bit more involved. <laughs> and this is my iron here. There's a little half door. Can you see me? Yes. Mm -hmm. there's, a, um, there's a little half door flange here. The heater's taken out. The heater's inside. The heater's taken out, put in the centre of a blazing fire, much, much stronger fire than that. When it's hot, it's taken out with the tongs, put in there. Half door goes down and a stainless steel sleeve put over that for ironing. It's a bit longer drawn out than the irons are using today, but it's, uh, it's twice as effective. And this is the smoothing iron. This is one I rarely use except for sweaters or something. And this is the is solid. There's nothing, nothing, no half door, no nothing. So it's just left close to a, a fire until it's hot enough to, to iron something either very, very silky or very, very woolly. And again, there's a sleeve for going over that. Where, where do you wash your clothes? I boil the black pot. This is...
This is the black pot, which is quite heavy, as you can see. And mind you, an American one day, and she asked me, would I give her the black pot? Now, how she was going to get that back to her? <laughs> takes me all the time to get it. And certainly, when it's, when it's full of water, it weighs exactly four stones. I hang it on the top creek here with some water in it. Then I fill it up with water. Uh, I'm a strong woman, so I'm able to lift it off and do my washing in that. Do you my wear washing wash wire? Do my what? <laughs> wear <laughs> washing wire. Drip dry. Drip dry. I put the slows when I wash them out on the line, and yeah. if the drip's the drip, and if they don't, you're going to run into the dryer. <laughs> and what is your name? Margaret Gallagher. This is my washboard here. You all familiar with the washboard? Oh, yes. Right, and these are the bags of glue for whitening the clothes. It's about 280, I would say. Yeah, Margaret, the Queen has bestowed on you some title. Explain that, please. Right. Uh, last year, I was fortunate enough to be uh, given uh, the MBE, which is a member of the British Empire. And that was presented to me by uh, Prince Charles in Buckingham Palace. It was a great honour. It was an honour I never expected in my wildest dreams. I didn't even know what it was when I got it. <laughs> I was absolutely <laughs> delighted to get it. And the trip to the palace was something I will remember as long as I live. One of the best days of my life. And uh, what, did they give you a, a certificate? Yes, a I, got, a I got a medal. I got a, a medal, medal mm -hmm. presented by Prince Charles and a certificate which is on the wall there from uh, signed by Her Majesty the Queen. Unfortunately, she was out of the country, oh. but uh, mm -hmm. Prince Charles gave no. it to me. It was a lovely meeting. I had met Prince Charles before on two occasions. Is it the larger one? I the larger one, uh -huh. yes. Okay. It was a great honour to get it for voluntary work in Northern Ireland, as I did not deserve it. I definitely did not deserve it, but having said that, I was delighted to get it. It was an absolute pleasure, and Katrina was here with a group. And you had no idea. No, I got a word about a month before that I had been nominated for it, and then I heard nothing until it appeared in the paper. Uh, and did you know who nominated you? No, I didn't. Uh huh. And uh, like, how how do you live financially? I have a job, well half a job at the moment. I did have a job. I started my working life at when I was 46. Only 46? When I was 46, she yes. And my father was bedridden here for 17 years and I looked after him. And I got my first working uh, position when I was 46. After was, he died? Well, 10 years after he died. Or oh, 10 ex, years ex, after? Eight, uh -huh. eight years after he died. What did your father do? A small um, cow farmer, to, uh, 12 acres, as I mentioned, the 2.47 hectares. Uh -huh. And that's what I did as well. It was um, quite a, a, a change for me to leave an environment like this and go out into the working world. It was a frightening exercise, as it would be. I remember Margaret telling me she, she didn't know how to boil a kettle. No, I did not indeed. That was one of my first jobs was to put on a kettle, and I, I did uh, find that very, very difficult because I assumed everyone's kettle. You just don't think. Yeah. You're not interested in how other people live when you live in here. And to go to someone and say, make a cup of tea, to me it was no problem. But when I went into the kitchen, it was a serious problem because everything looked the same. There was no black kettle. There was no hearth fire. There was absolutely nothing. So... Um, it was. It was a tremendous learning experience. Well, it was. Yeah, the learning mighty fast, and you had to adapt mighty fast. It was frightening. I still would be, mm. because the beauty of this house is you can be yourself. At work, you can never ever be yourself because you're dealing with the wider public, and they are quite a different animal than I, than I would be used to. And you're very happy, aren't you, Margaret? I couldn't be more happy. I mm -hmm. could not be more Do you get a, a daily newspaper? No, I don't buy papers at all. Mm -hmm. I'm not the slightest bit interested in what's happening. Anywhere. You're not? Not mm -hmm. really. Could well, you really? like us all that anyway, you know. When my father was living, we bought the Daily Mail. He was a great, firm believer in the Daily Mail because it was, he called it a clean paper and it didn't focus too much on sport. We didn't get it every day. We got it at the end of the week and he read the six weeks, pa the six days papers the following week. Uh -huh. And... Uh, News is not all of great interest to me, really. What's happening in Abu Dhabi does not really concern me because I can't sort it out anyway. And I don't think they're uh, unnecessarily worried about what I'm doing. <laughs> oh, yes, we're very interested in what you're doing. No, but I mean, you're talking about the newspaper. I mean, what if I read something and there's war in Abu Dhabi, there's nothing. I, I didn't start it. 
and I would not <laughs> contribute to it. Mm. So it does not really concern me. But you and don't want not everyone, to know what's going on. It's not a matter of I don't want to know. You will always hear. Mm -hmm. You mean, you will always be told what's going on, you know. Yeah, um, but the thing is, you can do things about her in your community. Exactly. I think if everyone looked at their own little patch, and my patch is very, very small, you know, you could jump it from one room to another and the bit of ground around here. Mm -hmm. And if I look after that and look after my job, I think I'd have done a great job in life. Because if everyone minded their own backyard, and never mind a drum cree or Stormont or Hillsborough or Dublin or the new president of Ireland or whatever, if they minded their own little patch, that's enough for them. Because at the end of the day, we're all people with our own special roles. And no matter how limited we are in skills, we've all got a wee role to play. I think mine is here doing exactly what I'm doing. Aren't I'm you a religious lady, Margaret? Well, if, if by religious you mean do I believe in God? Yes, I do. I couldn't live without him. Uh -huh. I am a Catholic, a practicing Catholic. Uh, I love my God. So I could not get on. As I say, I couldn't survive. I know I'm here, of course, to see of him. And I know that the minute he decides to call me, he'll do it. And so do you participate in your church yes, services I do. regularly? Yes, I do. Yes. I think we all have to have a focal point. There must be something out there that we're leaning towards. Do you have family living nearby? Um, I would have cousins living scattered all over the country, mm -hmm. but my real family, my, my own family, my sister and her husband and child live in England, St. Neath's hunting done in Cambridgeshire. Sorry, but her work in the community, she does, that's where, that's what her the family in the community. community. Tell about the community yeah. work, Margaret. Yeah. Well, uh, tell me about your community work, um, Margaret. My community work is basically run in a historical society. I think historical societies have a very important role to play, not only in uh, the cultural aspect of what's happening here, but especially in remembering our past uh, and taking it forward with us, because I've always maintained that unless we know where we're coming from, we have no idea where we're going. So through the historical society, we have lectures pertaining to our past, and uh, pertaining to this particular area. I sit on Historic Monuments Council in Belfast, which is an advisory body to the Department of Environment, and that's very interesting. Because do, you, do you have a car then to yes, travel? Yes, I had uh -huh. to buy a car, Maggie, some time ago. My employers insisted I had a car to visit outlying projects. Uh -huh. That was another nightmare, because while I had a driving <laughs> license, I am not a car person. I know where the water goes, right. and I know where the petrol goes, uh -huh. and that's it. Uh -huh. <laughs> and I'm on so what did you buy? What kind of car My brother-in-law came over and bought me a Peugeot. Peugeot. Mm. Peugeot. Yeah. Peugeot. Yeah. Peugeot. French car. Right. French car. And where does uh, your sister and brother-in-law live? In, um, in England. In, in England. In uh -huh. Huntingdon, in Cambridgeshire. Uh -huh. We, uh, we admire you very much. Thank you very much. Sarah, you have a question? Margaret, can you tell us about the adaptive thatching and maintenance? Of yes, that? certainly. Uh, while the house has a reasonable valuation of £10, it's still quite expensive to maintain. People assume that when I don't have electricity and I don't have water and I don't have a telephone and I wouldn't socialise socialize all that much that I um, don't pay out any money. But I really am. Um, the maintenance of the house is serious. The house carries a listing order. That means it's entitled to grant aid from the Department of Environment who have the listing order on the house. But the thatching is very expensive. And you can get a new coat of thatch. Mine cost almost £6,000 five years ago. That, while it's expected to last 10 years, one night of high wind and the thatch is gone. And what is it made of? Okay. It's um, organically grown material, straw or wheat or rye. It's a form of straw. Mm -hmm. This particular um, the straw that's on the house is grown in the Midlands of England. Now it can be grown in Northern Ireland, but it isn't organically grown at the moment, or has, wasn't when I was getting thatching done. And it's better if it's organically grown because it's free from fertilizers, therefore there's nothing to tend to, 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 to grow weeds. But uh, the thatching of the house is expensive. The decoration isn't because it's only ordinary roach lime that I mentioned earlier, and roach lime and a drum or dye mixed to get the colour on the bottom. The scallops, which are the rods which secures the thatch to the to the roof beside you, they are very expensive. Hmm? Yes, those are willow rods which are doubled like a hairpin, and they secure the actual thatch to the to the straw. The composition of thatch is, this is only a very temporary ceiling here, plywood, the cheapest form of wood. 
and the idea of that is to stop the dust from the old timbers coming down. But if I lifted that away, you would see, first of all, the bog oak, the original timbers. They are not nailed, because there was no such thing as nails at that particular time. They are plugged. That means they're secured with other pieces of timber. Next to that, you have the Watts's. And I'm sure you're all familiar with Yeats's poetry, poetry of clay and wattle made, when he talked about Power Valley Lay. Well, this is clay and wattle made. Next thing, you have the wattles, which are leafy branches of an alder tree. Next to that, you have the scraw, which is the large sod of bald earth. And next to that, you have the first coat of straw or rush, which in our case is rushes growing locally. Then you have the scallops that keep going in through the thatch, as you see from the outside, into the actual scraw itself. And that is all that's holding on the house, is holding on the thatch. So it is very vulnerable to birds and to high winds. As I said, we're only 28 miles from the Atlantic. The prevailing westerly wind does irreparable damage to the roof. It is due for darning. That is not a full coat. That's in bad places. And those are the thatching implements on the wall. You have the darning needle, which is the long needle. You have the mallet for putting in the scallop. And you have the rake. You can't use a, uh, that's a wooden hammer, the, the mallet. You can't use a steel one because it will break the scallop. You have the rake for combing down the, uh, the, the finished product. What about the sparks from the fire? I know it's damp every day, but do we have a dry July? Yes, so? yes. Um, the if you look up the chimney, you see it's so crooked that no spark can go out. It would never, ever live. One spark couldn't live to get out the chimney. There are so many humps and hollows to draw up the smoke. It's the humps and the hollows draws the smoke up. Mm -hmm. And the sparks will hit up the humps and die instantly. Otherwise, your house wouldn't last five minutes. Mm -hmm. Do you have a chimney as well? No, I do the chimney myself. I put a whin bush, I go up on the ladder outside, and I put, you know what a whin is, gort, yeah. the yellow flower thing. Mm -hmm. I put that down the chimney with a rope attached to it. I then come in here, go up the chimney, pull the, the bush down, it brings all the soot. It's very, very messy. You have to wash everything on the dresser. You have to wash everything full stop after it. But it's only once, you know, before Santa Claus. And do you do the work on the roof? Yes. Yeah. No, I don't. No, I have to pay. No, yeah. no, I don't. Is it hard to find work. someone to it do? It is. Is it? It's hard to find them, but it's far harder to pay them. <laughs> oh, really? It really mm -hmm. is. Yeah. We do have someone in County Fermanagh, you know, 15 miles from here. He's only a young guy, which is great. And he was one of the people who tendered for this house, but he didn't, the materials were not organically grown. Uh -huh. And I couldn't give it to him because the people who listed the building said it was better to have them organically grown. But now I know it isn't. There is uh -huh. no difference whatsoever. <laughs> so I will, uh, if I'm spared, will certainly be going local. Are, the, are there other thatch roof houses in this there are, area? There have the modern conveniences of Inside. water or whatever. Like how many do you know or have any idea? Um, well, in our 40 square mile study area, there are two more. Two more. But they mm -hmm. have electricity and they have bathrooms and they have whatever people. Uh, Can you get insurance? I don't believe in I come from a family who do not believe in insurance. Now, why is that? I think if you can't trust people, I mean, insurance to me is for someone who's out there sponging, living off the government, and who's trying to make a quick buck of somebody who trip or fall or whatever, and uh, look for insurance. I'm not into that culture. I think the people who come here are friends. There are people who are interested in heritage. And if the fall to me is well, true, what I mean, I guess. Uh, by the way, yeah, yeah, uh -huh. yeah, that's what I mean. I not, I don't mm. get involved. I do not have the house insured. If the house mm. is burned tonight, the house is burned tonight. Uh -huh. End of story. My problem. And is where would you go? What would you want to live in if that well, I would did happen? Day with it. You yeah, would. I would hope that. But if I, you didn't, what would you do I tomorrow? I don't think I would live very long. I'd be so sorry after it. But insurance wouldn't solve that. All you'd have from insurance is money, and money is nothing at the end of the day. But money would you, would you uh, want to go into a house that no, had electricity no, and running I water? Couldn't. I just don't know. It's something I'd hope God would never land me in that situation. If he does, I'd have to embrace it. But I tell you, I'd kick up about having to do it. Well, you go to live, visit your sister every so often, and your yeah. sister has a, a lovely house yes. with all of those things. Yes. And you're dying to get home. Yes. <laughs> uh, it's lovely to be there because they're family, but it's, it's uh -huh. not home. The home is your own pad. Home is where you kick off your shoes and, you know, you can see X the world out there. Uh -huh. I'm here and I have everything. They have nothing. 
And that's not being, you know, that's not being envious, thanks to the God, that's one thing given in a house like this, you do not be envious of anyone else, mm -hmm. because I'm the one person to be envied. Margaret, do you we have, have to run out of time, time But you have to get a cup of tea before what? you go. Oh, no, we have to oh, No, no. You're something else. <laughs> well, I'm real. That's the difference in me in a museum. I'm alive and well. Uh -huh. I'm happy. Uh -huh. I don't dress up, as I said to Maggie, for you come. You don't want you to be comfortable. It's cold I, here. Yes, it is. It's very cold here. It is cold here, Maggie.